On today's show, I'll tell you why the Dallas Mavericks versus the Bulls game is somehow a must win and a must lose. And also, did Mark Cuban have ulterior motives when he was talking about Jalen Brunson the other day? Talk about that and more on today's Locked On Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic and this is Locked On Mavericks. Welcome to the Mavericks, NBA champion. He hit it! He hit it! It's good! And the Mavericks have won the game! You don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. Welcome, you are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Angstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show and making Locked On Mavs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube, but the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day and to comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section on Friday night's game, Dallas versus Chicago. Get Get closer. Do you want the Mavericks to win or lose that game? Because it is a doozy. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook partner of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. Isaac Harris out today. And uh, the Dallas Mavericks have quite a proposition in front of them. Uh, Today, we'll get into some of Mark Cuban's comments about Jalen Brunson. Did he have ulterior motives? For that, for the conversation that he carried on and on about Jalen Brunson and the the details that he shared and all that, and also we'll talk about Tim Hardaway Jr. versus Tim Hardaway Sr. I think Tim Hardaway Jr. did an incredible teammate thing. Did they decide who the teammate of the year award is? Because I think Jalen uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. should come out and maybe get that award. Uh, we'll talk about why later. But first, let's start here. The Dallas Mavericks are in a conundrum, a kerfuffle, a just a. a a mess of their own design, their own making, basically. And where they are right now, everybody's doing standings watch, and there's two standings watch. It's almost sometimes people make the, there's two Americas. Well, right now we have two two standings watches right now. Uh, Very very different analogy I just made there, but uh, the Mavericks, to make the play-in, where they could still, their season would still be alive. After Oklahoma City beat the Utah Jazz, the Mavericks are now a half game back from the, the Thunder because the Thunder have one more win than them. They have the same number of losses. Mavs are a half game back. They have to finish one win better than the Thunder. So to make the play-in, this is what has to happen for the Mavericks. They have to beat Chicago on Friday, this game that we're talking about. It's a conundrum. It's a must-win and a must-lose. And then they also have to beat San Antonio, the last game of the season. That one doesn't seem as difficult. OKC has one more game left against the Grizzlies. OKC has to lose that game. If they win that game, there's no way the Mavericks can, uh, there's no way the Mavericks can make the play in. And that just is what it is. And that game is, uh, that game is also on Friday, right? No, that game's on, that game's on Sunday. So we, we won't even know like that. We won't even know. Uh, they'll be playing at the same time as Maverick Spurs. So, that's the that's the play in standings. The Mavericks have to win against Chicago, win against San Antonio, and OKC has to lose against Memphis. And that OKC Memphis game isn't until Sunday, the last game of the season. Then, if you in on that note with the play, play in standings, Memphis is going to play Milwaukee on Friday. So today, basically, Milwaukee has already clinched the number one seed. So they might sit everybody. They have no incentive to to do better this season. They have all the incentive in the world to rest their guys. All their dudes have dealt with injuries basically this season. So they might sit everybody and Memphis can clinch number two. The Kings have already like put everybody on their roster as questionable for their next game because they're waiting to see what's going to happen with Memphis in Milwaukee to see if Memphis decides to try and go for it. So there's all this jockeying for position right now. And I mentioned Memphis and Milwaukee because OKC plays Memphis Sunday, the final game of the year. Memphis might not have anything to play for and probably won't. If Milwaukee sits everybody, Memphis wins on Friday, they clinch number two. Then on Sunday, they have nothing to play for except for kicks and kicks and giggles and a parade in your city or whatever the John, whatever the John Morant line that people were up in arms about. Then that's the play in standings for the Mavericks. The lottery standings, you look over the other side of it for the Mavericks to keep their draft pick because it's owed to the Knicks if it's not in the top 10, which is a real fun wrinkle right now. The lottery standings, the Mavericks... Tied with the Bulls, the exact same record. 
both have two games left. They're in the 10th spot. The Mavericks have to stay in the 10th spot to have an 80% chance to keep their pick. If they fall to the 11th spot, they have a 9% chance to keep their pick because of how the lottery standings work and the lottery odds and the, the smoothing and all that, all that stuff and everything. Uh, since Utah lost their, you know, the Mavericks can't catch, can't catch Utah. I don't, th- I don't think they can catch Utah still, but with that Mavericks played the, the bulls, <laughs> the Mavericks play the bulls in their next game. And then the bulls played Detroit in the last game of the season. So the Mavericks need the Bulls to, to to beat Detroit, but the Mavericks need to win those two games to make the play-in. So now they're in this scenario. Uh, basically, Dallas needs to be worse than Chicago and OKC. They are worse than OKC. They do have a worse record than OKC right now, but they also have to be worse than Chicago to keep an 80% chance to keep their pick. Chicago's pick is owed to Orlando. It's protected one through four. And so their odds only change slightly if they move from, say, 10 to 11. So their odds just change a little bit. So they don't really have a ton of incentive to win or lose these games. And our Locked on Bulls hosts and my co-host on Locked on NBA on Thursday, Pat um, Pat the designer, after the Bulls last game, called them a gutless team. So I don't think they're going to be winning games anytime soon. And so that brings you to this game. Dallas versus Chicago, Friday night. All-stars in the building. DeMar DeRozan, Zach Levine, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, Jason Kidd, Billy Donovan. The like Dirk, the, the history of Dirk Nowitzki, the history of Michael Jordan. This is now somehow a must-win and a must-lose for the Mavericks. Bulls have already pretty much clinched the 10th seed for the, for the East. And they are already kind of where they are with their draft picks. So they don't really have an incentive to go either way. They just have not looked good. This team has not looked good. Maybe they'll want to come back and and go. But the Maver- if the Mavericks win that game, their play-in chances stay alive. If they lose the game to the Bulls, then their um, then their their draft standings, like their draft pick odds, kind of stay alive at that point. This is a must-win and a must-lose game for the Mavericks. It depends on what side you're on. Let me know in the comment section on YouTube what side of this you're on. Do you still want them to go for it? There's still some fans. I, I talked to some fans on Wednesday, and the, I, I'm I understand where you are. You're like, I still want them to keep playing. I think the Mavericks are there right now. I think that they still, hey, let's stay alive. Let's let's show that let's show Luca and Kyrie that we can, you know, we can win and we can get there and just give us a chance. And, and you know. As long as we believe, you know, you go up to the Ted Lasso sign, you whack the Ted Lasso sign, like, hey, we believe. Luca and Kyrie don't want to shut it down. We talked about it this week. Luca talked about it this week. As long as there's a chance, they're not going to get shut down. Well, this Chicago game is the end of their chance, basically. If they lose against Chicago, there is no, that they don't have a chance then to, uh, if they lose against, yeah, if they lose against Chicago, then, man, like, at that, like, <laughs> they lose against Chicago. They have a better chance to keep their pick, but then they also, their hopes to, uh, their hopes to make the play-in are done. Yeah, they're done because they can't win more games than than OKC. They have to win this game. They lose against Chicago. There's no way they can make the play-in. The math is making my head hurt, and it's the also this doomsday scenario is making my head hurt because there's a doomsday scenario where the Mavericks somehow. Don't make the play in. They be, they beat Chicago on Friday. They're like, all right, our play in chances are still alive. OKC beats the the Grizzlies, and then the Mavericks <laughs> beat the Spurs. And if OKC beats the Grizzlies, but the Mavericks still win their two games, then the Mavericks don't make the play in. And if they also win those two games, and Chicago loses the one to Dallas, then Chicago has better odds to win their to <laughs> better odds in the standings. And the Mavericks have only a nine percent chance to keep their pick. This is where we are right now with the Mavericks. That's the doomsday scenario for the Mavericks. And that's looking like the the favorite right now because Chicago doesn't look very good. Now, they could surprise you. I mean, DeMar DeRozan, I've, I've watched him hit a game winner in the American Airlines Center. I mean, we, we've seen this team beat the Mavericks. The Mavericks' defense is, is not very good. The Bulls' defense is pretty good this season, surprisingly. That's the doomsday scenario for the Mavericks. So, the question is still, do you want them to win or lose the game? They lose to Chicago. 
Their playing chances are done. Their season is essentially done. They have one more game against the, the Spurs, but their draft hopes stay alive. But it's only an 80% chance. They still There's still a 20% chance one team below them jumps up into that top four. The Mavericks lose their pick, and then you know, then all of a sudden you can tr- you can still trade two picks in the offseason, but you don't get that pick this year. And that's a big blow to the asset purse and everything this offseason. What do you want them to do? Let me know. Coming up, Mark Cuban said some some weird comments about Jalen Brunson and a bunch of and Kyrie Irving uh, uh before the Kings game the other day. Wanted to take some time and talk about that today because I think Mark Cuban had an ulterior motive. And I'm gonna tell you what it is next. But before we do. Let me tell you about the Nissan Aria Player of the Week. Nissan is <laughs> the Nissan Aria Player of the Week is uh, is brought to you by the all new all electric 2023 Nissan Aria. The Player of the Week, I guess it's I, I guess it's got to be Kyrie. I'm I'm gonna give it to Kyrie again because I'm I've just been thinking about his shots that he made against the Kings and the fourth quarter that he had the other day. The fact that he can hit some of the shots that he does the the layups, the fin- he has the best finishing like package in the NBA of just finishing shots. Like, and the crowd was electric. The, the, the like the shots that he was taking, there's a co- shot he took in the corner. It was right in front of me where the ball just arced so high in the air. You thought it was going to hit this video board. And then it came down right into the basket. Like just exactly perfect where he needed to place it. It was incredible. It was electric. It was powerful to see that happen in real time and then to hear the crowd's reaction after that. The 2023 Nissan Aria packs pin you to your power, uh, pin you to your seat power and premium intelligence all in one EV, the all new, all electric 2023 Nissan Aria. Shop now at nissan.usa.com. All right, Isaac, let's get into Mark Cuban's thoughts and comments about Jalen Brunson the other day. Because he talked to the media, and we talked about this a little yesterday, but he spoke to the media and answered some questions, and the question about Brunson was brought up. I I have no interest in hearing what they have to say about Brunson at this point, but we have not heard Mark Cuban publicly, really, about this stuff. So I do understand the question being asked. I'm not interested in that at this point, but his answer made me interested in it because of the way he answered it and how in-depth he went into it and how much he revealed in it, which made me put on my put on my little conspiracy uh, tinfoil hat and think about it because Mark Cuban went in on this topic. Mark Cuban read reporters text messages that he was sent by Nico Harrison and Brunson's agent, Aaron Mintz in late January, early February, 2022 showed him, showed him text messages. Like went out of his way to say, here's the proof. Here's, here's what, here's the proof right here that, Hey, you know, we didn't get a chance to offer Jalen Brunson. This, these are his quotes about it. We aren't going to make a decision on JB based on what Aaron said his dad wants in July. This is a text from Nico Harrison that he showed to Mark Cuban. And Nico back then saying, this isn't fair. I agree with you, but I think that the New York thing is, t- is too tied to their family to overcome. They thought he was gone. Even during the season. So Mark Cuban pulls out these texts and look, we thought that he was gone during the season. This is a text from Nico Harrison. Mark Cuban said, quote, we wanted to re-sign him. We wanted to keep the season going together. We thought, because JB kept on telling us he liked being here. JB never gave us an an indication. It was only the parents that were an issue. Where it went south was when Rick Brunson took over. When the parents took over or the parents took over, we didn't know what the bid was. (laughs) They never gave us a number, talking about Brunson and his agent in the offseason. They never gave us a number. Knowing the numbers now, I would have paid it in a heartbeat. But he wouldn't have come anyway. There's just no possible way that it was about money, talking about Brunson's decision to go to the Knicks. These comments make me want to pull my hair out. And I'm sure it does to you too, because at w- what are you gaining, Mark Cuban, at this point? What are you gaining from sharing this stuff? You're losing something. You're losing something with this. I'm locked on NBA. Talked about this with, with Pat yesterday. This is something that a free agent would look at and be like, they're going to show text messages that my agent sends. And they're going to, you know, talk about this, uh, this guy's parents, the Jalen Brunson, who's like so respected in the league and has been a professional about all this and hasn't, you know, done the low blow thing. He hasn't done the Nate Shelley thing 
AFC Richmond and, and West Ham, that the Ted Lasso, where he left the team and then just like crapped all over everybody when he left. He hasn't done that. Jalen Brunson has been a consummate professional like we all ex- would expect him to be. And then Mark Cuban comes out and says, you know, it went south when Rick Brunson took over. When the parent got involved, you know, it all went south for us. And they didn't even, they didn't even come to us and give us a number. They didn't even give us a number at this point. And so Mark Cuban saying all this and, and going, going so in-depth, showing text messages, it's like he's been waiting to do this, right? Well, wh- why now? Like just because somebody asked doesn't mean he has to reveal all this. I've seen a bunch of comments from, from, from you, from, from Lockdown Maps listeners saying, well, if you didn't want to know the answer, why did, you ask, why did they ask Mark Cuban this? Cuban doesn't have to reveal all this and show text messages and go and re-talk about, you know, they're, oh, we didn't get a chance. But here's why he did it. Mark Cuban is being a human meat shield. Mark Cuban is taking some pressure off of the Mavericks' number one target right now. Mark Cuban is being the distraction. Mark Cuban is being the, hey, look over here. Hey, look over here. Look. See this? Mark Cuban is being that for Luka Doncic. Because who was the most criticized player on the Mavericks up until two days ago. It was Luka Doncic. People in the league are talking about it. You know, everybody, like all media people are talking about it. Luka is getting raked through the coals right now. And some of it's for good reason. He's been brutal on defense. He's been whining more than ever to the refs this season. He's admitted to that. The team's not playing well. He's been playing terribly in fourth quarters and crunch time. His conditioning is not good. All those things are valid, but he's been getting it. Luka Doncic has hit the point in his career where he's no longer the young up-and-coming guy that everybody's excited to look at and see. The spot where Paolo Bencaro is right now. The spot where, uh, you know, Evan Mobley is right now. You look at some of these guys and you're like, okay, let's go. I love this guy. I'm so excited about this guy. Oh, man, I'm so excited to see these young guys. I'm excited for... uh, I'm excited for, for these guys. I'm excited for what they're doing right now. I'm excited for Scotty Barnes. I'm excited for, for some of these guys. And Luka Doncic just passed that now. He's gotten to the point where he's good enough, where he's done some things in the NBA, but hasn't gotten them over the hump. And then also is, you know, now expected to do a lot. Had a down, everybody that had a down season, roster construction, coaching, all that stuff's been down this season. They make the trade for Kyrie. It's been terrible since then. Luka Doncic was the one that everyone's pointing at. And then here comes Mark Cuban to drop all this new information about an old story that was juicy gossip and all that kind of stuff. I'm not putting it past Mark Cuban to be the distraction, to say, hey, I've got something. To say, hey, I've got something that can take all the pressure off of Luca. And hey, maybe some maybe some pressure off of off of our, our current season right now. And hey. He could also just be looking at this and saying, hey, this saves my, you know, this this makes me look not as bad because, hey, we didn't even get a chance. I call BS on that. If Brunson never gave you a number, go get the number, right? Like, go get, what are we talking about? He never gave you a number. If, he, if we knew the number, we would have matched it. Go get the number. I know Mark Cuban has had problems with getting free agents numbers in the past. That is a joke for longtime Mavs fans. <laughs> Go get the number if you didn't know what it was. <laughs> but the Brunson quotes are a red herring. The Brunson quotes are a distraction. They're the smoke. It's the sm- not the smoking gun. What a, whatever is the the distract. It's a distraction from what's happening with the Mavericks right now. I almost fully believe that. Coming up, he said a, he had a couple quotes about Kyrie too. Should we be worried about how confident he feels about Kyrie? And then also, let's talk about Tim Hardaway Jr. because I thought he did something that was really incredible and needs to be given credit uh, for being a great teammate. We'll talk about that coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel is the number one sports book in America, and award season is happening right now. You can go see all the kind of awards that they have with a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. You can get that back. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Again, go to FanDuel Sportsbook. Check out all the awards that they have. Defensive player of the year. That one's been really interesting to me because Jaron Jackson Jr. is the favorite right now in FanDuel. Minus 165. Brooke Lopez is second, plus 135. Bam Adebayo, a distant third, plus 
forty five hundred, like way, way beyond. It's basically Jaron Jackson or Brooke Lopez. And Jaron Jackson has played less than sixty five games, which is not the threshold this year, but it's going to be next year. He's played less than sixty five games, and he only plays like twenty eight minutes a game. There's a bunch of minutes that are not accounted for. <laughs> There's twenty minutes in a game that he's just sitting on the bench for his team. So how much credit do you give him at this point? He's dealt with foul trouble and all that. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, if I, if I, you know, when we decide to talk about our awards and all that, but FanDuel has it. If you think, you know, who's going to win, go check it out. FanDuel, put some money down on it. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. All right, Isaac. Thanks everybody for making Locked On Maps part of your day. If you listen five days a week, you're an everydayer. You're part of the raccoon squad. We appreciate you guys listening and uh, appreciate um, female listeners too. A couple of them have come up to me during games and I just did not expect that there were female listeners according to our demographics on YouTube and, and Megaphone. But I appreciate each and every one of you as well for listening. Uh, I've heard from a bunch of people that you guys listen as and people listen as a couple. I think that's super cool too. And uh, my wife doesn't even listen to this. So we don't even, we don't even talk about the podcast as a couple. <laughs> but appreciate all of you guys. Mark Cuban talked about how I think his comments about Brunson were a distraction. He also talked about Kyrie. Quote, I'd love to have Kyrie stay for sure. I'd love to have him. I would want him to stay for sure. I think we have a good shot. I think he's happy here. He tells me he's happy here, and I get along with him great. I think he's a good guy. All I can tell you is everything I thought I knew about Kyrie because of everything I read was 100% wrong. Mark Cuban seems confident that the Mavericks can keep Kyrie. I think I think they can keep Kyrie because I think they're going to give him more money than anybody else is going to give him. I don't think there's some there's another team lining up. Mark Mark Stein talked about this this week where he doesn't think that the Lakers or the Suns, who are the two teams who are going to trade for him, are going to do that. That are going to line up and have to move heaven and earth to to make it happen. But Mark Cuban seems confident about it. This does feel a lot like the Jalen Brunson quotes from last year where he said, you know, hey, we can pay him more than anybody. And we're confident we're going to bring him back. That was right after the season. And Mark Cuban said that knowing that he was already com- not confident in him coming back and he thought that it was that Brunson was gone. So I don't know what to trust here because of what happened with Jalen Brunson last year. And Jalen Brunson was a homegrown player that had been drafted in the second round that had been developed by this Mavericks team that had went and you know, helped them win playoff series and was a leader on the team and all that. Kyrie is just like renting some space. Kyrie's just just got here, like just hanging out. He's been here a month. He's still kind of just like, hey, I'm, I'm hanging out. And if we win, if we win, if we lose, we lose. That's what it still feels like Kyrie's doing right now. It's great. It's great, dude. Dude, it's great. Well, I don't know what to think about the Kyrie quote. I I, I don't, I'm not, it doesn't, it doesn't change my opinion on, on if I think the Mavericks are going to re-sign Kyrie or not. Okay, let's talk about this Tim Hardaway Jr. versus Tim Hardaway Sr., Quote battle, I guess. Battle of leadership. Tim Hardaway Sr., former NBA player, Hall of Famer, and a multiple-time All-NBA, All-Star, all that kind of stuff. Goes on a Fox Sports 1 studio show in person, which I think is important, and start. it was asked about the trade, the Mavericks trade of Kyrie Irving. Why hasn't it worked? You know, what's the status of the Mavericks? Now your son plays on this team, so please tell us about this. He talked about, you know, me personally, this is quote, me personally, that trade wasn't for them. I would have kept what I had. What isn't broken doesn't need to be fixed. Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney Smith, they were their defensive anchors. Problem number one. Quote, it's not Kyrie's fault. Everybody wants to put it on Kyrie. Kyrie came to a situation where they thought he would be the savior. They're missing a leader out there. Luca is not a leader. Kyrie is not a leader. Jalen Brunson was a leader. A leader goes out there and Gives the team confidence. Make sure the team is doing what they're supposed to be doing. A leader shows by example by playing defense. When somebody said and when he says something, he also does it. He also called Luca a crybaby. So those are Tim Hardaway Sr.'s comments on his son's teammates and his son's two, you know, the two stars on his son's team. So Tim Hardaway Jr. hears those comments and goes, "Oh crap!" Goes to Dallas Morning News and Callie Kaplan and requested to speak with them. That doesn't happen often. The players are like, hey, I gotta, I gotta get some, I gotta get something out there. Especially if he didn't do it in a tweet, which I, I, I respect. He wanted to put the whole story out there. From Tim Hardaway Jr. quote: I disagree with it a thousand percent. I've come out numerous times and told you all how much leadership Luca has shown throughout my whole entire time here in Dallas. He shows it on and off the floor. 
And a lot of the situation we've been in as a team, we wouldn't be in without him. So let's just set that straight. Quote, and Kyrie has been nothing more than a leader since he's been here, making sure that everybody's good on and off the floor, texting everybody in the group, a player only chat just to make sure everybody's good and everybody's holding together. Everybody's staying strong. Nothing but leadership there. It's just hard to deal with that. I love those guys. I love my teammates. I loved every team and teammates that I've been a part of and been with. So, so just to be focusing in on this instead of the game, it's disappointing that I have to come out here and say this. Quote, talking about his dad. I love him to death. Like I said, my dad, he made a mistake. It's his opinion, not mine. We're two different human beings. So that's really all I can say. I got to say, for Tim Hardaway Jr. to come out and to come to his teammates defense, I think is awesome. And to come out and go against his dad, that's got to be awkward. You have disagreements with your family that you don't want to talk about with them, let alone to the media in front of everybody. And he came out and defended his teammates. You know, whether, whether it's true or not, I think I tend to believe Tim Hardaway Jr. in this because it, it tracks what I've seen this season. I also have said that this team doesn't have a leader. So maybe I agree more with Tim Hardaway Sr. But I thought it was awesome. But, but it stands to reason, though. I still think what Tim Hardaway Jr. did was awesome. To come out, to defend, to defend his teammates, to come out and to give a quote to local media also, not just put it on Twitter, not just, you know, release a video, whatever. To come out, put his thoughts in writing, to send it to the Dallas Morning News, to put it out there so that he can be on the record and say, hey, I disagree with this. I, I don't think this is right. What my dad said, he, he called it a mistake. It was a mistake. It was his opinion, not mine. You got to appreciate that. And he could have just let it go, right? Tim Hardaway Jr. could have just let it go and said, oh, you know, and then he'd have to speak to his teammates in the locker room probably about it and be like, hey, you know, he would probably say that to them. You know, that's my dad. That's not me. I don't, I don't think that. You know I don't think that, right? Like go over to Kyrie, go over to Luca in the locker room, talk about it. Or maybe they don't. Maybe they just push it under the rug. They could push it under the rug, push it under the carpet, push it under the, the bleachers, whatever, wherever you want to push it. Take Bikini Bottom and push it over there. And so he could have done that, but he didn't. And a team that, that's truly toxic, that truly has like fundamental issues, I think he would have just let it go, right? We've seen that happen before where, you know, well, VAR Ball says stuff and the Ball Brothers just kind of like let it go. <laughs> you know, just like let it go. And they're chill, they're chill guys and maybe they just let some of that stuff go. But you don't see a player come out and defend his teammates like that defend his teammates from his dad basically and come out. And I thought that was an incredible thing to see from Tim Hardaway Jr. It shows what a great teammate he's been with everybody for all the stuff you can say about his strengths and weaknesses on the, on the court, the off the court leadership and the uh, standing by his teammates, I thought w- was really good. And I thought that that was a great thing to see from him. Let me know what you think in the comment section about the bulls game. Should the Mavs win or lose this game? Doomsday scenario is definitely possible where the Mavericks don't know anything. They win against the the Bulls. Then all of a sudden the Bulls are below them in the tank, the tank lottery. And then the Thunder are above them in the play-in standings. They miss the play-in and they don't get their pick. That's the doomsday scenario. So this Bulls game is pretty much a must lose. We will have a post game right after that as well. So we'll know if the doomsday scenario is happening after that. Join me for a uh, you know a therapy session or a celebration session or whatever you want to do. Me and Isaac will be back with a post game after that. Guys, thanks so much for being here on Lockdown Mavs. Go listen to Lockdown NBA game to game, breakdown of all the games from local experts like me. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Lockdown Mavs. Peace out. Boom.